I'm still talking Champions League. Real Madrid will take on Manchester City later tonight. Now, the problem that Ancelotti has with on his hands right now is he doesn't know where if to start Rodrigo goals or probably to start Federico Valverde. Rodrigo, uh, a young guy, no doubt, but he's doing very well for Real Madrid. He scored the first two goals against Espanyol for them to win the title on Saturday. And uh, if you look at the impact of Valverde in that Real Madrid squad, He's also a very, very fantastic player. Give them so much leg, give them so much energy in the middle of the park. Even if he plays from the right side of the of the, of the attack, it's also very, very impactful. Also going up and down, supporting whoever plays, you know, right back position. So now, when you are a coach and you are in this kind of situation, do you think it is it's going to augur well for Real Madrid against that Manchester City side we saw last week? For me, they really know how to score goals going forward. Defensively, they might have one or two hiccups. But going forward, Man City are very, very deadly. They know how to score goals. That's true. Um, and I think uh, for the defense, you will have to blame both teams, you know. But tonight, I expect Man City to fortify their defense because the eyes will be fully fit. It's played like maybe about a couple of games after that first leg. And um, I expect Concello to be back. That's and, right. Uh, what's the and the right Walker, I don't know if Walker will be available for that game, but Cancelo should be back. Rodri's on top of his game right now. And uh, and mm -hmm. hey, that guy that uh, that opened the floodgates in that uh, first leg game, talking about uh, Dia, uh, what's it called? Uh, Maris. That guy is another Maris. player that we really, really, really take a, surely look Maris. into because he's one guy that makes things happen from nowhere <laughs> from the right side of the attack. and. Hey, going up against a uh, Fernando well, Mendy. Fernando Mendy is as well take to take match up the match up the, Then they wouldn't have scored that second goal that night. You know, you never know. I didn't get that. You catch up with him. Yeah, he's got speed to catch up with uh, uh, Vinicius. If he had played there, if Walker had played on that side or Concello, they would have catch up with him. You know, because they've got speed. So yeah, let's see what happens. Anybody's game? Why you put him? When you put a Fernandinho, who's in a, who's playing twilight football right now against a Vinicius who's just 21 years old, you should know that pace is going to be a big determining factor. And I'm still talking football. Let's quickly tell you that I remember that I super agent, Mino Raiola, mm -hmm. talking about this super agent. He passed away over the weekend at the age of 54. And now there's uh, a talk going on around town now. Who's going to inherit that empire? Because don't forget, this is the manager. That's, uh, that has a contract of a whole lot of world stars, you know, all over Europe, from Didier Drogba to mm -hmm. Zlatan Ibrahimovic to to a uh, what's it called to Aland, the the man of the moment Alan. right now, who a lot of players, who a lot of teams want in their in their in their team. Mm. It's true. I don't know who's going to take over. Maybe his family will take over. Or, but he's got he's got like an agency, so you should have people that will close up this guy's contract because Haaland was meant to sign a contract with Man City and that's been on the line before he fell, he fell ill, you know. So, and I'm still sure that's on the line. That wouldn't stop their business from the agency. So, but who is going to inherit or head the agency is who I don't know right now. But yeah, right now, there, are some key people, there are some key people involved in, uh, in, in their dealings. You know, according to report, there is a Rafael Pimenta is lawyer and Mino's partner for 20 years. And uh, his cousin is also very much involved as uh, Vincenzo Laihola and uh, don't forget Jose Fortis. So these are the three guys who are very much involved in the day-to-day -day activity of our uh, agency. Was the, he was able to move a lot of players on this season, you know? People like Drogba. That's right, that's right. Yeah, they were meant to sign no contracts at the new club this season. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen to Paul Paul, but probably we will decide to leave a... Uh, Manchester United and go to probably a team like Juve. Don't forget, Juve has been on his tail ever since he left them for Manchester City, for Manchester United. And we don't know what the makeup of the team would be like when uh, Ten Hag comes on board. Don't forget, they signed a deal with Manchester United right now. So we don't know the, the kind of milk that they want to play. Probably want a pug by the squad or probably want to no. move it on. And don't forget Cristiano Ronaldo as well. So all these players, very soon, by the end of May, we, they will all know where they will be most definitely. And before we wrap up on today's show, let's... they try to emulate the, you know, they want young and hungry players now. So probably yeah. about ten man.
that this this guy is going to sign 10 new players. So it's going to be an overhaul. Not just one yeah, or two we, players. If, yeah. if, you are going, if, you are, if you are going to sign 10 new players, you have to balance the books. And how do you balance the books? You sell some players yeah. and bring in some new players. Now the question is, yeah. will, they have, will they make enough money from the players that will be sold? That is the big question. Because they need to balance the books. So you have to make mm. enough money before you can say, okay, I want to bring in this player. I want to bring in that player. It doesn't really work like that. It might take a, a, a process. And I know you are signing sure a they, lengthy deal with Manchester United. I'm not sure they're going for well-known players or already made players that will cost them like 100 million or no. They want to go for the youth. Youth players, bring them from all over the world. Let them gel them together and see what they can do in the league. You know, luckily uh, I, they might not, they were going to be in the Europe next year. So maybe that will give them a chance to see what the team can do in the league. Yeah, but I know that Manchester United used to have a lot of fantastic players coming from the youth team. But ever since we had people like uh, Mourinho, who we know that doesn't believe in youth players, uh, Mourinho, you know, uh, uh, well, the present coach right yeah. now. Yeah, and mm -hmm. yeah, Van Gaal as well. They, we've not seen a lot of, you know, young stars coming up just the way we used to see them during the time of uh, Ferguson. Apart from Ferguson, it, it all, most, most, virtually all the coaches that took over after Ferguson have not really been churning out youth the way we used to see them. Don't forget players like Paul Scholes, uh, David Beckham, uh, uh, the Neville brothers. All these guys are players on the youth side of Manchester United and they grew up to become world-known stars. They won everything with Manchester United.